So Carla, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me again. I wanted to check in with you. You were on either earlier in the year or late last year, and I know you had already announced your campaign to run for the New Hampshire House of Representatives. How's that going so far? How, how's it looking in the polls and, uh, and what's, what's the latest? Yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm running for state house this time. In the past, I actually ran for Senate. In my original Senate race, I started as an absolute nobody, and I got about 38%. And I've uh, worked my way up over the years, and I, I got a solid 45, 46% last time, which I think threatened the establishment. So they literally redistricted to take the part I won that I needed to win in order to win in 2022. Uh, and gave it to some other Senate districts. So I looked at the lay of the land and, and for the geeks and nerds out there, they basically took a Democrat plus seven, which was pretty unwinnable, but I was closing that gap and made it a plus 20. And I was like, look, I'm not gonna fundraise and fight that fight and just lose again. So I set my sights a little lower and I feel pretty confident that I'm actually going to get into the state house. When I had contacted a sitting senator, a sitting Republican senator, uh, to ask him if they would support me in a more sort of significant way this time, uh, this gentleman actually said, oh no, we really want the Democrat that I was running against, his name is Lou D'Alessandro, oh, Carla, we all think Lou should just die in the Senate, you know, and, and, and he's elderly, he's in his 80s and whatever. So really, I see this as a strategic move to get into the House to really position myself for that Senate seat that will be opening up, you know, not that I'm wishing ill on this, this you know, Lou D'Alessandro, but, you know, the reality is we can't continue to have these 80 year old old fogies who created all the problems that people like me are trying to solve. So the race is, is a, you know, it's, it's a smaller, more manageable race. You know, uh, in fact, when I told my husband, oh, I think I'm only going to run for this part. He was like, you mean just our neighborhood? And I was like, yeah, just our neighborhood. And he was like, that's easy. We can put a sign on every corner. So, yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Good, good, good news. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about New Hampshire politics. And for everyone listening, I, I don't think this just applies to New Hampshire, because if you're thinking of running for any kind of local office in any state, I think this might be educational. But I, I was just perusing Wikipedia and looking at who you, uh, you know, what the lay of the land politically is in New Hampshire. And it seems like your legislatures, your state legislatures, are dominated by Republicans because you've got a Republican speaker for both houses or majority leader, whatever. And then you've got a Republican governor. So I can understand the, the uh, state houses, the legislature, because in a lot of states, you know, you've got a big city that is strong, you know, most of the population and it's Democrat. And then you've got all these districts that are more small town or rural and are Republican. But what puzzled me is you also, you have the statewide office of governor, he's a Republican, and then you have the two Democratic senators. So how does it, how does it work out? Why, why are all of your federal people uh, Democrats in, in a state that seems dominated by Republicans? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, certainly one we hear from time to time. I suspect, uh, first of all, you know, I think Granite Staters, the, the slogan is live free or die, right? So I think there is this, this uh, innate sense of localism and sort of there is a libertarian bent in terms of the people. But I also think, you know, they tend to think, oh, well, they actually like to split the vote that way. So they like to have local politics that is Republican. So that's kind of smart because that means, oh, we're uh, you know, going to work on low taxes, we're going to work on limited government and all those things that we like to say are sort of Republican issues. But then I think what's happening is a lot of people are also like, ooh, we like the bennies that come from the federal government. And yeah. so if we vote Democrat on that side, we get a lot of you know grant money and, and funny money coming into the state. Um, 
one might posit that you know whether uh, you know we we think there is election fraud or not election fraud uh, i have heard people bring that up as a possible issue that you know oh you know really it shouldn't have swung so red on a local level you know on a state level and then you know so blue because biden did surprisingly well in new hampshire and um I, I, you know, I'm not sure, but I do know that there was an audit in the town of Wyndham that happened uh, that was kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, there was, there was, uh, everyone was yelling election fraud, election fraud, and there was a big uh, statewide audit of the town. And it turned out that it was absentee ballots that had been folded in a certain way that when they went through the machine was reading wrong, right? So there was actually a, a, a miscount, but there was a reasonable explanation for why. But during that audit, I know that there were several people who were actually looking at the ballots. And so my question to them was, does it look like everyone's voting down ticket Republican locally? And then, you know, sort of for the Democrats, nationally and people were saying that the the physical ballots they were looking at that was the case so i think it's maybe a uniquely new hampshire thing it's kind of like let's let's split it uh there is an incredible amount of dirty Democrat money that comes into the state. Uh, someone like my opponent when I was running for Senate, the uh, Lou D'Alessandro, I mean, he had a war chest of over a million dollars for, for Senate race. You know, I, I raised 30 to 50,000 and, you know, I was closing in on him if you consider he'd been there for 20 years. So uh, we do know that uh, because New Hampshire is first in the nation, so we have the first primary, and that's sort of an interesting situation because there's a lot of flux around that, and we could certainly talk about that. I just think it's 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 just it's weird. I, I don't really know what what the reason is, but those are some of my theories. I think that you know it's uh, a lot of Democrat money that comes in that sort of funds these federal races. Uh, the districts are are you know weirdly gerrymandered. I think in order to sort of promote that outcome. And so uh, for me as a free stater, and that's just someone who's a libertarian who's in New Hampshire, who has moved here, who really wants small limited government, uh, a lot of us don't care about what's happening on the federal level in any event. So I think, you know, for 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 the, the ground people, the, uh, uh, what's the word? Grassroots. For our, 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 us grassroots people, we just genuinely, we don't care what they're doing on the federal level. We care about what is our state house doing, what are our state reps doing, what are our school boards doing, what is happening locally, because honestly, that is what's impacting all of our lives. If we learned one thing from COVID is it matters where you live and it matters who's representing you, who's gonna lock you down or not. And I, I don't remember, I wanted to ask you, how did uh, your governor do during 2020? You may have told me this last time we talked, but I can't remember. Bad yeah, so, lockdown uh, or, you know, mild, <laughs> short, long, what was it? Short and, uh, you know, and, and Sununu is a, a, is a politician. Right. And and his dad, of course, was also governor of New Hampshire and served as chief of staff for uh, Bush senior. So very, very well connected family. Uh, and and when I say he's a politician, I mean, he understands how to play both sides of the 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 game. And so what we saw is there were some lockdown orders, but you could drive a dump truck through them. And we did. Right. So there were. Yes, the Democrats were calling for lockdowns and they, you know, the fear model and we've got to control everything and all of that. Um, so there were some orders and there were executive orders. Uh, but if you looked at the actual language of it, there were a lot of exceptions and, and we used them. So we did. Uh, you know, we were like, well, we're complying, but you know, you said here, you can't ask me what my medical condition is. And my medical condition is free will. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and so I think we ended up being ranked maybe sixth or seventh best. So, you know, we were sort of in the top 10 in terms of uh, a, taking a freedom approach to, to the nonsense, but we weren't the best. I mean, I think Florida, you know, smoked us all on that one. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, and we shouldn't forget about uh, South Dakota. Uh, they, they never locked down. In fact, uh, their governor really took the, the most libertarian approach because where DeSantis started prohibiting certain things that no person in their right mind would want anyway, but, but which, um, you know, local businesses might be doing. She just said, this is none of the government's business. You want to bet? Yeah, no, Christy Nome. Yeah. Christy Nome really impressed me. She was actually out in New Hampshire in the 2020 race. I got to talk to her and meet her, um, you know, was very supportive. I always attend Freedom Fest, which is, you know, a big libertarian, conservatarian uh, conference. They actually had it in South Dakota last year, which was awesome because I got to see the Badlands, which was something that was on my list. Uh, so she certainly did really, really well. And you're right, we shouldn't forget about that. I think DeSantis is a great grandstander and he's getting all the attention. But yes, we should call out that Christy Nome did a really good job on that issue. Now, she's not great on another, you know, several other libertarian issues, as people pointed out, because I was in a photo with her and then I got attacked by the pro you know, cannabis crowd, because she's really bad on cannabis and, you know, marijuana legalization. And I was like, I'm in a photo with someone. Just relax. OK, we're not Stalin-esque. No one needs to, like, wipe people out of photos and, you know, rewrite history. So yeah, <laughs> people I, need to relax a little, Tom. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I read somewhere that that was, you know, something a totalitarian government would do. Something right? like I read in high school. Right. Um, but uh that's interesting, too, that I, I meant to say that uh, you actually have people that vote for two different parties. One of the things I've always, you know, wished we could have is for the national elections that we have the, the presidential vote and the congressional votes on different days. I mean, there's nothing that says we can't do that. I know they wrote a law that says they would be on the same day, but but there's nothing in the Constitution that says we can't do that. I'm just wondering how often we'd get more of a split. Um, but I don't know anybody who does what you say your your neighbors there do, which is, oh, I'm going to vote for the Democrat for this. I'm going to vote for the Republican for that. that that's very interesting. I, also, I wanted to ask you, do you, um, so a lot of people have talked about the migration out of states like mine, New York and, and uh, California. Do, do you have a problem with a lot of uh, liberal uh, people migrating out of Massachusetts and coming into New Hampshire and changing the way elections go? So uh, great question. I mean, in my experience, the people who leave Massachusetts are actually more trending towards a liberty choice. Uh, you know, here in the free state, we actually had our biggest second wave of movers. So we had a really huge wave of people who came out in 2008 that was sort of a Ron Paul push and revolution, you know, and Ron Paul did, you know, he came second on the uh, on the Republican and Democrat primaries in, in 2008 and 2012. And uh, so we had a big wave of movers who came then. And then of course, through COVID, we actually saw a lot of people moving in as well. These to my, uh, to my mind are people who are choosing freedom. They're choosing health freedom. So we saw a lot of that. Um, people do sometimes say, you know, the inbounds are, are, are the problem children who then come, they leave for it, but then they vote for the services here. I don't know that that's true because down south, actually on the border of New Hampshire and Massachusetts, that whole band of towns down on the border are some of our most conservative Republican towns that are just red, red, red. So, hmm. you know, that's a little, you know, build a wall. I, you know, I'm Queen <laughs> Quill, so I like to say build a moat down there. But, but that is sort of, you know, what we're seeing from a reality standpoint is that that's not the case. Now, I'm highly encouraging everyone who, who, you know, who, who's looking for more freedom, but maybe not of a libertarian flavor go to Florida or go to Colorado or go somewhere else. Like we really want to build a libertarian homeland. You know, we, we, we there were a lot of these independence movements that are jumping up. Uh, the one that I like to talk about is Hawaii because people hear that story and go, well, that one we should actually 
kind of, that sounds like they might have a leg to stand on. Yes, we deposed the queen, we put the Dole company in there, and we made, you know, those people awfully rich. But the model is really the same for, you know, there's CalExit, which is a, um, a progressive leave national divorce group. There's Texit, obviously, which would be more conservative. And then up here with Nexit and the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, really what we're hoping is that this can become libertarian, meaning small, 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 limited government, lots of free markets, prosperity, peace, all the things that we know that these policies actually result in. You know, the Democrats don't have a leg to stand on anymore because here's the reality. It doesn't matter what your good intentions are. We can prove they have bad outcomes. It is undeniable if you look at Democrat cities now, Seattle, Portland, uh, Oregon, uh, Portland, Maine, not looking so great either. Actually, we have a Democrat mayor here in Manchester now, and things are starting to, you know, seem a little more sketchy. We never had homeless people in New Hampshire when I moved here. And so the Democrats, you know, hey, we're all bleeding hearts. No one likes poor people suffering. No one likes human suffering. It's not like any Republican is going, yeah, let's stick it to the poor, <laughs> right? But the point is, there are ways to do it that have the outcomes that you want, meaning less poverty, but they are bleeding hearts with bad policies that are creating more poverty. Here is the reality. The laws of economics are immutable. You know, that's just a fancy way of saying they're undeniable and we know it, whether they want to admit it or not. So if they subsidize poverty, we will get more poverty. If you have a war on drugs, you will have more drug use. I mean, they, they subsidize corn and sugar and look where we ended up. So all of this is just to say that we have to stop with the idiotic things we've been doing for the past 50 years and we have to try something new. It doesn't seem like the rest of the country has the appetite to do that, but we want to do that in New Hampshire and with true federalism, show people that our policies, our ideas, more freedom, less government works better than any of the crap that they're doing to us right now. So um, your district, the one that you're running for now, about how many people are in it? So it's about 3,000. It's really small. My, my you know, the... Uh, the beauty of the model in New Hampshire, and that is part of the reason we chose it for the Free State Project, was that uh, we have a large, large, large legislature here. So there are 400 seated legislatures in the House. There are 24 senators. And what does that mean? First of all, it's a citizen legislature. They get paid 100 bucks a year. Uh, and toll. <laughs> wow, thanks. Um, you have to pay taxes on the hundred bucks too, by the way. <laughs> and um, and they represent about three thousand to three thousand three hundred people. Uh, no one has an office. Your constituents have your cell phone. Uh, people can call you. You see the person you're voting for at the grocery store. It is quite representative still. So uh, here in Manchester, actually, I'm really excited because. The city just decided to screw us over nice and good by ripping out the community garden that we built over the past uh, three years down in literally my backyard. There's four acres of park behind my building, my house, and they just sold it in a sweetheart deal to build this community center where they're ripping out our community park. So this has motivated me to be like, I am door knocking like an M. F, you know, like I'm just like, I am out there talking to the people because I think people, and I see it, they're fed up. How could anyone have gone through these past two years, look at the gas price, look at, you know, the, the real nerds, I don't care what the government says the, the, the inflation rate is. I mean, they lie to us, we know that. And for people who want to know more, go look at shadow stats. But I have nerds, friends who like track everything and they have spreadsheets and this one guy actually calculated that 
groceries have gone up 41% year over year. So again, when I say these are failed policies, I can prove it. And someone's going to have to give us a shot to be like, can it get any worse? No. So why don't we try human ingenuity and real human rights and real freedom? You know, and the reason I asked about the number, that's very interesting. So you you have almost as many representatives in your legislature as uh, the U.S. Congress for the whole country, for 330 yeah. million people. And uh, I love the idea that... Um, that they have your cell phone number. So, uh, and you could probably knock on just about every door in your, in this district yeah. you're running for, right? Yeah. And, and I had, I wasn't able to do that obviously with my Senate district, which was six times bigger. Uh, but I can, I can now and, you know, and I, and I'm motivated because I think it's time, it's time for some change. And honestly, they 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 did us dirty so our neighborhood is is pretty upset you know it's hard to justify taking out green space on five dead end streets so that you can launder arp american rescue plan funds to your connected buddies uh you know and and, and literally and i'm like you know this just i, I can't believe this, to be honest, they signed the letter of intent for the sale of a public park to private interests before they informed the abutters. And then they seemed awfully shocked when the abutters were like, excuse me. Now, you know, some people say, hey, Carla, that sounds a little like nimbyism. And I'm like, no, here's the thing. I believe Every approach to everything should be, how do we voluntarily get the best outcome? So I'm willing to even posit if they had told half the butters, probably half of the people would have been like, yeah, that actually sounds cool. Or yes, this makes sense. By super excluding us from the start, literally the people who live in the community and uh, who, who are paying the property taxes there in order to provide services that will be health services and the Boys and Girls Club and then all these other like weird nonprofits that seem to encourage poverty and that kind of stuff for a part of the West Side that isn't in my district uh, that probably does need services, but they don't need them here. They need them closer to where that area is. And so, um, uh, you know, May we live in interesting times, I guess, is, is the Chinese curse. But yeah, I'm super motivated. I'm talking to people. Voters are not happy. Um, I'm not sure. I certainly hope we've seen peak corruption. I don't know what else could be coming. You know, they printed 40% of all the money, US dollars in circulation was created over the past two years. I mean, those charts are, terrifying to see right and we know the inflation is coming and i actually think we're we're in trouble and so we need to get the people who understand what's happening because the rest of the people are in denial they're like doubling down on the stupid i mean it's <laughs> it's amazing to me so hopefully you know i can get in and i can help and of course we have a really big liberty caucus in new hampshire already you know there are about 110 120 depending on the issue liberty people they're not all free staters they're just you know old seventh generation granite staters too um who are just saying, look, we want limited government and let's leave it up to the people and the markets. And so that block has become quite influential. And honestly, Tom, the establishment is coming for us. Uh, it's definitely, it's, it's on. So, yeah, I guess the other thing that I, I want to emphasize too, uh, to anyone listening, um, as far as doing something like you're doing, how much difference you can make locally. And, and I, I'm, I live in the People's Republic of New York, but to be honest with you, our COVID policies have been no different than Florida's for since May of 2021. Uh, as soon as the governor lifted the statewide res uh, restrictions, even when the new governor tried to reimpose mask mandates in early 2021, our county mayor just said, we're not going to enforce them. 
So they were null and void. And when, when you drove around Niagara County, some people wore masks, just like in Florida, because I did have to go down there uh, in 2021, that uh, the people who wanted to wear masks wore them, and the people who didn't want to didn't. And uh, imagine you know. that, you know, I was on a plane ride, uh, you know, they, they ended the federal mask mandate, which apparently now they're talking about bringing back because, ooh, we need some control before the elections, right? We've got to get the NCPs really riled up. But, uh, you know, on the, on the plane announcement, they said something, I'm paraphrasing, but they said something like, you know, uh, there is no federal mask mandate anymore. We just ask that everyone respect your fellow passengers' decision to wear or not wear a mask. And I literally, the first time I heard that, I just yelled, could we have done that from the start? Yeah. Like that was, <laughs> That was how you do it, right? Look, if you're super paranoid and whatever, then where are the guy on the way back had two masks on sitting next to me, me and him on a tiny plane, right? And I was like, knock yourself out. Give yourself rotten teeth and CO2 brain damage and whatever, you know, like knock yourself out. Just don't tell me what to do with my body. It is not hard, you know, but I think they're in the spiral of cognitive dissonance, Tom. I don't know how they even dig their way out of this, right? Like, how do we literally go from my body, my choice, abortion, to not your body, your choice for masks, back to my body, my choice for abortion? And I'm like, but consistently, like, you have to concede that that is some level of insanity. You can't yeah. be like, sometimes I own you, sometimes I don't, you know, <laughs> like self-ownership is you own your body. And, and I'm pro-life, but I do recognize that it is your body, your choice. I will criticize you, I will judge you, and I will tell you it's a bad decision. And I do think you're a murdering baby killer, but I don't think it should be illegal because that is your choice. If we are going to actually be intellectually consistent, we have to start from the basis that every human being on this earth has self-ownership and agency over their body, not the government, not anyone else, you, you alone own yourself and everyone else has got to step back so that you as an actualized human being can make the decisions you want for you. And Karen, you don't get to decide for me and I don't get to decide for you. Yeah, and I, th I think that that argument is so compelling. If you remember early on, people started saying that the people who weren't scared of COVID when they started to look at who actually died from this, which was pretty obvious within a few weeks that this was something that was mainly hitting elderly people. And then they had to come up with this idea that, oh, you're not just protecting yourself, you're protecting others. Now, a hundred years of, of scientific studies had said, right, all the way since the Spanish flu, these masks don't do anything, you know, for yeah. other people or the wearer. So you know, it, it is all nonsense. Um, I, I like, but it's your, also your... very insidious, and that message is very communist. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. That that is how they eked it in, and it was it was shocking to me. You know, some people will talk about the mind control and the mass formation and everything. I mean, the the uh, the the real words are government propaganda. I mean, that is what we saw. Right, like, uh, I mean, this whole disinformation SAR thing, now they're just figuring out, oh, we could just actually straight up lie to you and then hope that they, you know, ban the clips so that you can't do side-by-side -side comparisons of say Fauci being like, I never said we should lock down, right? And you're like, <laughs> okay, here are like 19 clips of you saying lockdown, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, that's why they crave the censorship because, uh, the, the, we're at the stage, we're at a tipping point. We have the technology to free us and we have the technology to enslave us. And I think we're just in the battle there of, you know, who's going to win fastest. 